Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. Andy is back with us after several weeks away and he's here to show us his newly found guitar it's talent. Do you know how to do that? I don't. I don't. All right, we're gonna so it's really, it's the, it's the guitar's fault that Mark it's not how. sounding so good and it's not your fault, huh? Well, we've got a couple of weeks for that needs to be tuned because that is one of the items that will be up for bid, <laughs> the TV44 auction. And what you see here are some of the items that, that have been donated that perhaps will be the perfect addition to your home. Maybe you need some 45 records. We right? have an incredible collection of records. And in fact, Andy, when I saw this one, I had to pull it out because I knew you might you might go and purchase a record player just so you can play this. Is it Striper? It is Striper. No way. It is Striper. It's, not Yellow and Black, it's honest. It's the song Honestly. That's a great song. Yeah. Yes. Now, basically anything that you remember top 40 in the 80s, um, that's what we have as a, uh, in the 45s plus uh, Striper. We have a record player too. We do. We have a record player. Everything you need to relive all those years. So much good stuff, including this couch. That's right, and it, it reclines on both ends. Mine does not recline. Look at that. I'm Mark's Mark's chair reclines. It looks like I'm reclined. Mark's perfectly happy in, in the upright position, though. Well, if I would recline the chair, it'd probably knock into your feet as well, good. and that would not be very nice. Good thinking. It's very courteous. But before <laughs> we get into today's show, I'm going to see if I can leave my legs like this the entire show. Let's get into the topic of service. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Giving. What an important topic for, for all of us to have a giving lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea started in 2014 with members of Lipsick United Methodist Church. With a heart to be the hands and feet of Jesus, service to others, church members brainstormed how they could create an ongoing impact to the residents in and around the village of Lipsick. As a result, plans for the Lipsick Community Center were born, and in August 2017, that center opened to the public. Jennifer attended the grand opening on August the 5th, touring a facility designed to impact the body, the soul, and the mind. Thirty-four thousand square feet, a cafe, a youth center, a full-sized industrial kitchen, a gymnasium with six basketball rims, two volleyball courts and two pickleball courts and a stage. The Opportunity Center offering multi-use computers, classrooms, an aerobics room, historical museum and a walking track. And don't forget the medical clinic. Welcome to the Lipsick Community Center. Brainstormed in 2014, ground broken in May 2016, and open as of August 5th, 2017. It's the new focal point to Lipsick's downtown. Open for customers, though it would be better to call all who enter here friends. Well, it was actually the vision of the Lipsick United Methodist Church. They do mission trips all over the world. They decided several years ago to do something for the community itself, and this was their mission, is to build it here, build it for Lipsick, build it for Putnam County and all the surrounding counties. On opening day, it felt like almost all of the village of Lipsick walked through the doors of the center, in addition to many from the surrounding counties. Curious to finally see inside this big building, which impressively sends a message of professionalism and welcome on Lipsick's downtown Main Street. The visitors flooded through the doors and eagerly set off on self-guided tours. Meanwhile, outdoors, Main Street was temporarily converted to an atmosphere of celebration. Why all the excitement? We have classes for all ages, all the way from toddlers to senior citizens. We cover educational classes, art classes, photography classes. You can come here and learn how to use Excel, use Google Docs. You can come and paint a pineapple if you want. We have all of that. And then there's the medical clinic. But we do have a free medical clinic with a pharmacy. Um, right now it is open for uninsured and underinsured residents of Lipsick only. We will expand that down the road. There's a gym. We will be running a basketball program out of there. A cafe with a huge, you saw the Florida ceiling fireplace. Um, a place to hang out with friends. If you're cold outside, come inside, sit by the fire, uh, wait for people to finish a class, wait to start a class. We have everything. And they even have the best membership deal available. Memberships are free, <laughs> absolutely free. You can get on our website, you can come into the center come Monday and we'll sign you up, absolutely no cost. And to think it all started with the Lipsick United Methodist Church. To be able to see all that they do for the community is unbelievable to me. 
This is their vision, this is their mission. Without the church, this would not have been possible. For more information on offerings at the Lipsick Community Center, visit their website, www.thelipsickcenter.org, or call them at 419-943-7400. Open Mondays through Saturdays, closed on Sundays. Well, just as many came to Lipsick this past spring, hundreds of area youth converged on the Elida Fieldhouse for the annual Converge Youth Conference, a weekend of uplifting music, encouraging workshops, and powerful messages. Among the speakers, Liz Ward. Here now is what she shared. Father, thank you so much that you're God. Thank you that you're here. Thank you that you want to meet with us. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to come, and I ask you to just pour out upon this place. You've begun to pour, and I ask you, Father, pour still more. Your people are hungry for you. We want to know you. We want to see you clearly. We want to know fully who you are and what our assignment is, who we are to be in you. Lord God, I pray as we open the word that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher, that you would speak, that you would love, that you would unveil. We just place ourselves at your feet. We ask you to teach us. May your word and your heart for us come alive. Pour out upon this place. Pour out upon each heart, mind, and life. Show us your glory. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been talking about a lot of things. Ben Stewart did a beautiful job last night just ushering us into the heart of God and the love that the Father has for us and what it is to be sons and daughters of God. And then Chip did a beautiful job this morning too, just talking about the authority that we have as believers. And my assignment this afternoon is to paint a picture of of despite where we've come from, maybe the shame that we've walked in, what, how the world's defined us, the things that have happened to us, the circumstances we've been born into, we're called to be ambassadors for the living God. And sometimes we don't feel good enough, or we don't feel smart enough, or there's so much weight on us, we can hardly get out from under it. And so how are we supposed to go out and, and do what God is asking us to do? And so the, the best story that I know of in the New Testament, or one of the best stories to communicate this, is found in the book of John, and it's in chapter 4. And it's about the woman at the well. And a lot of you have probably heard this story before, but I want the Holy Spirit to speak it to us today in a brand new way. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. It's John 4, verses 3 to 11, and then 13 and 14. This is Jesus, and he's with his disciples, and it says, Jesus left Judea and went away into Galilee, and he had to pass through, he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied from his journey, was sitting thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There came a woman, about the sixth hour is about noon, in the middle of the day. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now this is what I want to communicate to you. Okay, Jesus was a Jew, this woman was a Samaritan. In that day, Jesus, a man, would never talk to a woman in public. It was considered like, you don't, you don't do that, it was inappropriate. The other thing is that she was a Samaritan and he was a Jew. And the Samaritans were um, kind of a mixed breed. So basically, the Jews had all these Jewish laws and all the things that they felt like they had to do in order to be clean before God. And Samaritans were considered unclean before God. 
And so Jews, because they wanted to keep clean, would not associate with the Samaritan people. They didn't eat with them. They didn't drink with them. They didn't um, have fellowship with them. The only thing that they would do with them is barter with them. That's the only thing the Jews would do with Samaritan. If they needed something, they would barter or um, trade with them in order to get what they wanted. That was the only interaction that they would have with Samaritans. But this scripture said that that day, as Jesus was going to Galilee, he had to pass through Samaria. So, so in comes this woman, and we're not going to read the whole story, but eventually we find out that this woman, this Samaritan woman, Jesus tells her she's been married five times. And the man that she's living with now actually isn't even her husband. And so this woman has a past. She has a messy past. She has been um, ridiculed by her own people. Um, she's been, um, back in, the, in those days, men could divorce women for any reason that they wanted to. If they got tired of them, if they annoyed them, if whatever, they could just kind of keep just divorcing them. That's just the, the way it was. And so this woman had been tossed aside again and again. And um, here she comes to the well that day, and, and she's coming, and you've got to picture this. This is so beautiful. Jesus had to pass through Samaria. Why? Because she was on his heart, and her people was on his heart, and Jesus came to save everyone, right? Doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter what your background is. Jesus is all about saving you. That was his assignment. The Son of God came to save those that were lost, right? And so he had the woman of Samaria on his heart. So he comes to the well that he knew she was going to visit. He sits at the well while his disciples go ahead to get food. So he's watching the woman come, right? He sees her start. He's just coming over, and, and, and he's watching her. He knows who she is. He knows what she's chosen. He, he knows her past. He knows the sin. He knows the compromises. He knows the circumstances. And he's drawn to her. He longs for her. Why? Because he loves her. He came to save her. It's his assignment. And so she's making her way towards the well. And she finally comes up. And he says, she, he asks her for a drink. He says, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples went away to the city to buy food. Therefore, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, right, because he's better than her, he's clean, she's unclean, he's a man, she's a woman, how is it that you ask me for a drink, since I'm a Samaritan woman? Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And she said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Jesus answered and says to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. That's the way the conversation goes. That's the passage that we're going to focus on. But when, Jesus, when she came up to the well and Jesus saw her coming, and he says, give me a drink. This is really interesting. When I was studying this and I was sitting with the Lord, and this is what I do when I study. I sit with the Lord and I start conversing with him about what's in his word. I go to the word to meet with him, to hear from him. And I said to the Lord, I'm like, Lord, that, that phrase, give me a drink, he would not let that alone. I don't know if you've ever heard the voice of God, but if you ever heard the, the God start stirring something in you, give me a drink, give me a drink, give me a drink. I could not get past that phrase. I'm like, Lord, there's more to the story. He's like, Liz, I want you to sit right here. You sit right here. I'm like, okay, Lord. So we sat in that spot. And I had conversations with the Holy Spirit, and I found the neatest thing. In the King James Version, when, when our translations say, give me a drink, the King James translation says, give me to drink. Give me to drink. And the Samaritan's response to him, to Jesus, is drink of me. How can you drink of me? What I want to ask you today is, okay, 
where are you at with Jesus? Where are you at? Um, what does your past look like? What choices have you made? What junk do you wear? Who's labeled you what? Who calls you unclean? That woman came to the well. Jesus is sitting there waiting on her. And when he says, give me a drink, he says, give me two drinks. She says to him, why are you talking to me? You're a Jew. Don't you know who I am? That's basically what she's saying. She's like, you don't know who I am or you wouldn't be talking to me. And Jesus says, his response is, actually, you don't know who I am. That's what he says to her. Listen to it. She says, how is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink? And he says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. He said to her, you don't know who I am because as I saw you walking, if you would know who I am, you would come to the real well. You wouldn't go to that well. You would come to the real well. And instead, she was walking along and she had her clay vessel and she had her rope and she walked up to that well that was dug in the ground and she lowered her clay vessel down in there to draw up water that she would use to drink, to cleanse herself, to take home, to do whatever she needed to do for the day. That was her, that was, um, her sustenance for the day, right? She would use that water to do whatever. And so she's pulling the jug up, and he's sitting there watching her, and he's, and he's thinking. He's, he's already drawn to her. He's thinking, that clay vessel you're lowering into that well, I've got living water for you. You come here every day. This lady would come every day at noon. She'd walk out of her way. She wouldn't, she, she wouldn't go to the well in the morning. She wanted to avoid people, right? Because she, was, um, she just wasn't all that, right? She'd had five husbands. So she'd go out of her way to go to that well, and she'd lower her clay pot down there to draw water out that, that wasn't going to quench her thirst. She'd be thirsty again, Jesus said. And so I want to ask you, do you know that Jesus, just like Jesus had to go to Samaria, he had to come to Converge this weekend. He had to come. Do you know how excited he is that you're here? He is like so beside himself. Like he's sitting on the well waiting for this woman to come to you. Do you know how long he has been trying to get you by himself, like for you to just come and sit with him? He is so crazy about you, just like Jesus with the woman. He doesn't care where she's from. He doesn't care her background. He is just inviting her in to an intimate relationship with himself. Intimate meaning he created her, he loves her. Um, um, he's excited to be one with her. I just taught a workshop, one as in uh, um, a relationship of oneness. Okay, so she's coming and, and he sees he sees her coming and he's like, if you knew who I am, you would be asking me for living water. You'd be asking me for water. That's what he says. Jesus and said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who said to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. And she said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water. She didn't understand what he was inviting her to. He's basically saying, look, you're coming here every day and you're, dr you're drawing out water from a well. I'm the well. He's like, the water that you're going after will not satisfy you. I'm what's going to satisfy you. You guys, what well are you going to every day? How, how much are you going out of your way to get to wherever it is that you're going that you think satisfies you, that you think is gonna fill you, that you think is gonna be your sustenance? And Jesus is saying to you, he's saying, give me to drink. Give me to drink. That well, you're lowering your vessel wherever it is you're going. You're taking your clay vessel 
and you're filling it with all kinds of things, just like she was. And he's saying, that water right there, give it to me to drink. Give me to drink. And then she says, right, she says, why would you ask me? Why would you drink of me? So there's this beautiful exchange where Jesus says, take, I want to take everything that you think that you have that is sustenance. Everything you are using to fill yourself, all the empty water you're drinking, all the empty things you're doing, all the things you're choosing that don't have life, all the shame you're wearing, every resource that you're going out of your way to get to, he says, you know what? Give me that to drink. I will take that from you. I will drink that. I will become one with all the death that you're choosing. I will take it into myself. And you say, drink of me? Lord, why would you drink of me? Why would you ask me to be one with you? Why would you ask me for a drink? Why would you drink of me? I have nothing to give you. I've had five husbands. I've, I'm living with a man that's not my husband. I'm covered in shame. I go out of my way to, so that I don't have to, to see the look on people's faces. Why would you drink of me? And he's like, just, just let me. Give me a drink. Give me your drink. Give me what you're going to. Give me what you're filling your clay vessel with. Give me. And she, she doesn't get it. That's what he's saying to her. Spiritually, that's what he's saying to her. And she says to him such an interesting thing. She says, she says sir, you have nothing to draw with. See, she, she doesn't get it, right? How many times do we go to that well, whatever it is, whatever it looks like, we go to it and we lower ourselves down in and we try to fill ourselves with whatever it is and Jesus is sitting right there. Open invitation and we miss it. And so see, she's not getting it. She's not getting it yet. And she says, sir, you have nothing to draw with. See, she had brought a rope and her, her clay pot, and she was all prepared to do what she does every day. And she says, sir, how can you ask me for a drink? How can you drink of me? You don't even have anything to draw with. And the beautiful thing that's going on there is he is drawing her. He's gone. You don't know who you're talking to. If you knew who I was, if you knew how generous my God is, if you knew the love that he has for you, if you knew what I can fill you with, if you knew that clay vessel that I created in my name, in my image, if you would just let me fill it with living water, that's what he's doing. And he wants to do the same thing to you. The living God wants to meet with you today whether you're in session, whether you're in workshop, whether you're passing out boxes of food, the living God wants to draw your clay vessel to himself and he wants to fill you with all surpassing power, the life of God. That was the invitation. Give me to drink. And she says, drink of me. And he says, yes. And they go on to talk, and they go on to talk about worship, and they go on to talk about what it is to worship God, and what it looks like for his people, and what it looks like for her people. And Jesus finally tells her, I am he. I am the one that's coming. I am the one that you're going to worship in spirit and in truth. I'm the one where you're just going to take off all the filth that the world has tried to put on you. You're going to take it off, and you're going to worship me in spirit and in truth. It means you're going to worship me in the power of the spirit, and you're going to worship me real. You're going to worship me open and available. And, and you know what? 
What a beautiful invitation. He finally reveals to her who he is. And Jesus tells her, he says, everyone who drinks of this water, I'm asking you, I'm saying that I want to take and drink of you. He wants to take and drink of you. And he wants instead, it says in verse 14, Whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him will become in him a well of living water, water springing up to eternal life. This is what's so cool about the well of God. When we learn to drink from him and draw from him instead of the world and whatever it is we're drawing, when we draw from him, he becomes a well springing up inside of us. A well springing up inside, a spring outside there, an artesian well, the conditions in nature are just right. And what happens is there's a pressure that happens in here, way down in the earth. And it's this, just this beautiful amount of pressure and the natural condition. And what happens is there's so much pressure that the water just starts to come out and it can't help but come out. Rivers of living water, a spring, a, a, a well springing up to eternal life. That's what Jesus wants to do in you. I don't know what well you're going to. I don't know what your past looks like, but I know that Jesus has chosen you. And he's sitting and he's waiting for you. And he's saying, give me to drink. Anything you're running to, anything you're trying to satisfy yourself with, you give me to drink and I will put a water inside of you that cannot be stopped. That's why Jesus said, if you drink of me, if you get what I'm saying to you, if you're getting the picture that that I'm painting for you, he says to the woman, there will be such a, um, you'll never thirst again. You'll never thirst again. That's what he's saying to her. It's this beautiful offering. When he said, give me a drink, it wasn't just a conversation starter. He was saying, you give me what is in that vessel and I will give you everything. You give me all you're running to and I will give you everything in me. Jesus had to go to Samaria. He had to come to converge. He is so after you guys. He is so after you. You're so worth his time, and he's gone way out of his way today to meet with you. And so he says, give me to drink. Give me to drink. Give me to drink. I'll fill your clay vessel with the all-surpassing power of God. And you'll pour out to the nations the gospel of God, the presence of God, the love of God, the light of God, and I, it won't matter what your background is. Because your vessel has been filled with the living God in such a way that you won't run dry. I want you to know it's real. I want you to know he's real. And I want you to know he's hot on your tail. Let's pray. Father, we love you. I thank you so much that you're God. I thank you so much for the beautiful picture that you painted with the woman at the well. Father, you are so over our backgrounds, and you are so into filling us up with yourself. Oh, Father, if we could just keep the picture of what it is to be filled with springing up to eternal life. We love you. We praise you. I thank you for the opportunity now to share some of that water with other people. Father, I give you my cup. I give you my cup. Drink of me. In Jesus' name, amen.
plans already well underway for Converge 2018. Now, Liz is the director of internships at Teens for Christ. If you have a child or grandchild in the junior high or high school age, Teens for Christ chapters will be restarting soon for the upcoming school year. You can learn more at teens-for-christ.com. We are counting down the days to the TV44 auction and coming up next week on Faith and Friends, it's our annual auction show. Yes. Sit back and enjoy a look at some of the many items which will be up for bid at this year's auction, which is September 9th. There is still time for you to bring donations Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Give us a call at least a day in advance if you think you're going to need to arrive later than 3 o'clock so we can make sure we have people around. Finally, one more look at our scripture. Let's dive into Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Think about giving and how that impacts your heart this week. Thanks for joining us.